is good on juice. I know that because it starts my EK just fine. I've also already gone up in here and I've checked all the fuses. I unplugged everything, looked at them all. They're all good. All these connections up in here are solid. I've checked all that. I'm also confident that it's not the main relay there. I just replaced that. That thing is brand new. And I can hear the fuel pump priming just fine. Even when I go ahead and click it over into the second position, I still hear the fuel pump going as if it wants to supply the fuel. I've also had this guy off already and checked these connections, make sure it doesn't feel like anything has come loose or been pulled apart. And down in there, the positive cable from the battery is leading on down in there. It is solidly connected. So this thing is pretty old. It's potentially originally come with the car. And this thing may just be on its way out. So what I'm gonna do is something that you may have seen in like an engine shop if you've ever been. I'm gonna actually hook up the battery cables to this starter directly, bypassing all of the wiring and stuff from inside the car. And we'll see if this thing will just start and just move and spin on its own. I've got my cables. And here I know this is a good battery. Cut to the negative and the positive. This main terminal right here, this is where like the line from the battery, you know, goes to this guy right here. And this is that single plug deal. We wanna make sure that this thing is grounded real good just on the body. And then we connect the positive. Now how am I gonna get this in on the shot? So with this screwdriver here, we need to connect, we need to arc essentially from this point right here, the single point to the uh, positive terminal here. And that should cause this thing to shoot out and spin. And it did. So I was pretty good and confused at this point, to be honest. I really didn't think that that starter was gonna shoot out like that and spin. Uh, I thought nothing was gonna happen. But so I decided to take it down to the auto parts store just to have them check it and verify it. Because although it shot out like that, it did seem like it was a little weak. So it ended up being the starter. What do you- And uh, Robbie, speaking too soon. <laughs> no. And these are my new jams right here. Yeah, it should be good. Car quest piece, you know, but it'll do the job. Kind of matching that shiny brand new alternator I got too. Fitting. <laughs> so but so I'm definitely excited to put this new starter on here at this point. So sit rep, as Clarkson would say. This is a very top gear moment here. So I put the new starter on, tried to click it over, nothing, no change. Um, so that was super discouraging. So I kind of just went inside last night. I was like, Duh! you know. It's the next night here and I've had some time to think about it. I've had some time to look at stuff. And really what I think my problem is, is well, I know my problem is I'm not a trained mechanic. I don't know the kind of steps that you need to do to kind of diagnose things in the proper way. Let me show you here what I've already done. So yeah, we're back here. I took the dash back out because I'm thinking, you know, I was messing with this stuff. I'm messing with all these wires, so it seemed obvious to me to come back and make sure that all my connections were good. 
these three under dash things here that I messed with. I need to take these three out to go ahead and get to the cluster and move that all out through the dash. Those things are fine, the wires look fine. I've like super exhausted checking all these wires out. And I know one thing that everyone's gonna mention is this clutch pedal up here. That has already failed on my car before. <laughs> This pin right here is what would go to that top clutch switch there. That's the A one, I believe, and then the B one right down below it, or maybe vice versa, I don't know. But it's for the top one, and essentially I've had this thing in my car for a while now, so I don't even need to press the clutch pedal. I just do sometimes because, you know, out of habit. Um, but so it starts fine with just this thing in here. So it's not that. The main relay is a brand new main relay. I know it's not that. I actually went and changed out this little guy too, his 12 volt piece here, something about a safety, a starter safety cut switch or relay or something like that. I don't even know. But so all that wiring seems fine, you guys. Like it seems fine. I don't think it's anything to do with that. So that led me to start thinking about the basics again, right? And what was I doing when I was painting this car? I was moving the battery around a whole bunch. So I'm thinking, okay, maybe just, there's a loose connection somewhere. Like it seems so stupid, but you know, maybe likely. So when I was painting the car, I had the battery kind of sitting up in the passenger seat area and I was just grounding it off to the side over there when the car was unpainted. So what I've been doing is grounding it here. And I'm like, well, maybe that's not a good enough ground or something, or maybe, you know, this thing is interfering with it. I don't know. So I went ahead and ground it up on the side here, just trying different ground spots. Still no change. But so here's the next thing I'm gonna try, and I think I'm onto something here with this. The terminals in the battery box look fine. Like they're a little bit corroded there, but they're not that bad. Like I'll clean them up, it's fine. And I kind of traced all this wiring right through here. There's my light. <laughs> traced all the wiring up through here, up until this guy, and it all seems fine until I got here. The top piece that would be sitting here runs down to the starter. When I felt it, it kind of fell apart in my hands. This is what I'm talking about, this cable right here. And this is kind of how it was. Well, it wasn't kind of like this. I made it like this. <laughs> but this copper piece right here should be sitting down over top of that. When I went ahead and picked this thing up, it felt like it just was hanging on by a thread. And boop, it kind of just fell apart. And no, it wasn't just like this. It obviously had electrical tape around it here. And then it had some shrink wrap right here. It has some shrink wrap up around it too. So the one thing that we didn't do when we were making these little battery connections here is crimp this thing properly. Squeeze this thing together with some pliers and it's held fine. I, I don't know if this is the problem, but this is what I'm gonna check next. And um, well, let's see. So this is kind of just gonna be a quick little job here, putting this guy back together. But if this ends up working, I am gonna either look for a different solution for this whole cable right here, or I'm gonna get the little crimper and we're gonna crimp this guy, the crimpiest crimp you've ever crimped. It must have just come loose when I was messing around with um, something, I don't know. <laughs> that guy is pretty much over top of there. I'm just gonna do this with these pliers here, so everybody chillax it out a little bit, okay? I know, this ain't the proper way, blah, 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 blah. Thank you, internet. Um, again, I'm just gonna see if this works. If this is it, if this is my problem, then we'll do something better, come up with a better solution here. Here we go, break out the vice grips. Grade A crimping right there, people. Just put a little bit of electrical tape around this thing. We'll connect it ball back up. See what happens, man, I hope. You know, it's crazy because it's, it was kind of a two-fold problem, potentially. My starter was going back. That was a real thing. But maybe the cable wasn't cabling too good either. You have one job, cable. I mean, that's on there, at least for the moment. So let's try that. Man, I hope this is it, dudes. I don't want to keep doing this. I wanted to do track day. That guy over it just so nothing explodes. 
for the moment. Everything's plugged in as far as I know. Again, I don't need to push the clutch pedal because I got that little pin thing. And all of a sudden, the Florida sunset looks that much more beautiful. Yeah, God. <laughs> so, to kind of give a little bit of backstory to this, you know, I was painting the inside of the car. I was moving it down into the driveway and then back up into the garage. And in doing that, I was moving the battery around a few different times while it was in there. I even mounted the negative cable to a couple different spots and it worked every time. So also with hindsight, I can now see that my starter was failing even then because it was definitely more sluggish sounding. And to be honest, that's something I've never come across. I've never had a starter fail on me. The one in the EK is the same one that's always been in there uh, since I've had the car anyway. So, but you know, I know someone out there is gonna be like, dude, you should always check your connections first before assuming it's a part or something. And I can see that now, uh, but you know, bear with me, I'm learning. One thing that I will say is that with this car, um, I have learned so much and I'm continually learning with it. This is the first time I've built any car ever well, built, you know, first time I've worked on uh, any car ever. And you know, this is something that I'm absolutely learning and having fun with, um, but I'm learning and that's the point. I'll tell you one positive thing about doing all this so much is I am very familiar with my under dash wiring here at the moment and how it all plugs up to the fuse box. But so now I know that was like a serious lesson and something that I won't forget. So anytime something like that comes up next, you know, I'll be able to think like, okay, let's logically start from the beginning. Maybe it's just a loose connection or something like that. Ironically, in this case, it ended up being the starter was failing too. I did get the little, um, on the starter, I did get the motor to shoot out and then spin when it was on the bench, but that must have been like its last gasp or something like that because when I brought it to the auto parts store then and the guy put it on the tester, it wouldn't even do that. Um, so that was failing, but also I just had the bad battery connection. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and fix that up. Well, it kind of already is from what you saw earlier. I just crimped it with the vice grips. I'm probably gonna get that crimping tool, uh, but I may also look into just like a solid battery cable, a pre-made cable, one that just has two ends on it that I need. Um, I don't know. That whole thing right there canceled my track day. I was supposed to be there today. Um, not real time today as you're seeing this, but today is when I'm filming it. Uh, it didn't happen. So, but what I am taking that as is a, I need to drive this car around a bit more, kind of find the weak point, so to speak. Um, try to find anything that's gonna break here at home rather than when I'm two hours away. I don't want that. So. Um, I do have another track day coming up, scheduled in a couple weeks, um, but you know, for the time being, I'm gonna dry this thing around and we'll see what we come up with. So, I appreciate all y'all watching. I know this was like a lot of messing around and I guess that's kind of what it was because I needed to find out what the heck the problem was. Um, so yeah, if you have any constructive criticism or anything like that on, you know, what kind of steps do you take when something is happening like that, I guess I should mention this is, you know, the no crank, no start situation. That's how I was looking into it when I was typing into Google, no crank, no start. Um, yeah, I knew it was something stupid, man. I knew it. Uh, but, you know, I just needed to find that stupid thing. And stupid thing found. So thank you all so much for watching. Talk to you in the next one.